Well, one thing also I would like to mention about MIP Alliance, we are not self-contained and isolated from the world, okay? Whenever we do believe that we have good specification, we enable our specification to other standardization activity. And one, one good action that we did with the GDEC is that we have a cooperation with the GDEC so that GDEC would be able to use the uh, file that we have developed on one side, okay? And also to, to, to use the Unipro. So today there is some cooperation. So there is engineers from the MIP Alliance that discuss from the MIP, engineers working within the MIP Alliance, okay, they are not belonging to MIP Alliance, working with engineers within GDEC to develop a UFS specification. So UFS specification will not be a MIP Alliance specification, but it will be using the MIP specification. Okay? Then you have the, the new interfaces that we are developing is the low latency interface. Here, so uh, this one is addressing mostly the case when we want to run a model without its own memory. You have DGRF, so DGRF is the uh, V3 for the 3G, and we are uh, today also developing the V4 for the LT model. Okay, so let, let's, let's be a little bit more uh, basic about the number of labels <laughs> we have within MIP Alliance. Okay, I know that it, there is a lot of technical excitement within MIP Alliance, but we have also to consider uh, at which level we want to contribute within the MIP Alliance. Uh, which level we want to be for, for the MIP Alliance. Uh, first, first level is the board. Okay, so the board, we are, there are six companies that are uh, at the board. Okay. Uh, for the board, we, we are able to, to pursue any uh, activity within the MIP Alliance. Then you have contributor. So contributor is a, is a, is a very uh, interesting level for, for the company because they, they are the one who contribute who do the specification. <coughs> okay. uh, so it, it's very important for your company if you do believe that uh, you, you want to be the first on the market. Time to market is very important for the company, okay? Uh, you are the first, you can ask for a price. You are the last one, it's not the same price you can ask. Okay? So it's very important to be a contributor and also to populate with your knowledge. The way you want to see this interface uh, working in mobile terminal, you want to be a contributor. Then you have, you, have, you have another level which is adopter. Some companies, they, uh, they are users of the MIP interface. Okay? They, they, they do not have the knowledge to be a contributor. Okay? Some company uh, is not in the interest to, 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 to put more resources or to get resources to participate in specification. And this is okay. But the, the difference is that the adopter will get the specification later, so when this one has been approved by the board and reviewed by the contributor, okay? But what, what, one big difference, uh, and interesting to be an adopter, is that you are covered by the MIP Alliance on the uh, IPR, okay? So if I may give you some, some warning about this I, IPR stuff, because uh, we got a lot of questions on this, okay? Uh, MIP Alliance, whenever you sign the membership agreement, Okay. You commit yourself not to pursue anybody doing implementing a MIP specification being a MIP member. Okay. So this is within the MIP Alliance uh, membership, this is royalty free. Okay. That does not prevent that when you do implement a MIP specification, company XYZ not being a MIP member to go after you because they have the patent in MIP specification. This is business as usual, okay? It's normal life. But you know that all MIP members, more than 170 companies, you have Intel, ST, Motorola, Nokia, all of these guys will not go after you to ask you money on the MIP specification, okay? So this is one point. The other point is that you, you might be looking to reuse the investment you did to design, implement a MIP specification in a product, okay? Not forcing to develop a new one because you will be going after a consumer market, set-top box, car radio, or, or whatever. You have to know that for, for this case, uh, we do also force our member to, at the minimum, grant you their patent on the wrong term, okay? 
So you are able to use a MIP specification inside the mobile terminal scope. So inside the mobile terminal scope, this is royalty free. Outside the mobile terminal scope, this is minimum of run from the MIP member company. Okay? And this is uh, the amount of the membership fee. Okay, how is our structure? So we have the board of directors, there's six companies. Uh, you have a newly very active marketing working group. <laughs> so we, we, we have hired uh, Marcia as uh, the director of the product marketing, okay? So to help us in, uh, in growing in the uh, industry community. Then you have the uh, technical steering group. This is where we try to define uh, innovate and conduct the roadmap, okay? Uh, like, like you can see, we have quite a lot of, of working group, but uh, they, are, they are very well uh, populated with engineers, uh, ID, uh, fitness uh, engineers, okay? You have camera, uh, I'm not going through all of them, okay, but uh, you see. Well, one thing important to, to, to know, uh, this is investigation group. Okay. Being a member or a new member, you might find that there's something that MIPI is not addressing today. And this is fine, we, we, we do not know everything, okay? And we are even more uh, looking for, for, for a new uh, working group, because we don't know everything, okay? When we did create MIPI, it was 2003. Our scope, at that time, we were application-centric. We were at the middle of the world. Okay, so it, uh, before 2006, the, the mobile, uh, the scope of MIP Alliance was any interfaces between application processor and peripheral. You know, uh, in 2006, we realized that we were not the center of the world. Okay, that MIP Alliance has to address also other interfaces that were as much important as the one we were defining between application processor and peripheral. And the first one was the DLF. Okay, which is very important for uh, a mobile terminal ecosystem. So in 2006, we, we did modify the uh, membership agreement to, to enlarge the scope of the MIP Alliance. So this investigation group is that you are able to go to the board and say, look, I believe you should address this kind of market by these new interfaces. Okay, and we help you to build an investigation group to, and, and to alert people, engineers, say, look, I have an idea, what do you think about this? Okay? And whenever you are ready to, to, to define correctly your scope, and more than this, what problem are you trying to solve? What I have seen through the MIP Alliance or the working group, whenever you do not know correctly what problem are you trying to solve, you are going to fail. Because engineers are, are not here for fun. They are here to solve problems. And, and when they are here to solve problems, it's very exciting for them. And sometimes you have to stop them, to send them, oh, we need a spec. Okay? Thank you.